Brought to you by Pontiac, official performance machines of the NCAA. I'm Bob Knight. Over the past five decades, I've had a chance to play with, to watch, and to coach some of the very best ever to play the game of basketball. And now, I'm going to give 16 students a chance to show me their very best. During the 40 years that I've coached, we've had walk-on players make great contributions to some of our teams. We're hoping to find one here. If you think trying to be that one guy is going to be easy, then you've never talked to anybody that's played for me. Hey! Don't think I'm beyond cutting everybody. That's too slow. Screen, set it up. Get it in there quicker. Get open. Let's go. Let's go. Previously on night school. To be able to walk on here is not even a dream. It's a fantasy. Well, when Coach first walked through those doors, you know it's a legend walking your way, and you know he's the man. There's only one guy you listen to out here. If your mother comes in here, are you going to listen to your mother or to me? That's right. Pick him up up here. Get up into him. Ah, who's got 45? Get out there. Coach Knight's a basketball legend. Who wouldn't want to be Coach him? Hey, 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 hey. When I say midcourt, damn it, I mean midcourt. Get your ass up here. Let's go. We're taking this competition very seriously. Here are the guys I think are in the mix. Two and 23. I'll go to bat for 23. He did not play well tonight, but I don't think he should be cut. In the end, he's going to make the decision, and we all understand that. We're going to retain 12 guys, and we're going to release four. The four guys we're going to release are Preston, Sean, Jared, and Matt. When you're out here, I mean, hate to say it, but I mean, it's every man for himself. Boys, tomorrow's phase starts with 12 and ends with eight. Good luck, boys. One, two, three, touch! The university is a great university. It's a great campus, a really energetic, enthusiastic student body. I love tech. I love the atmosphere. But uh, they definitely keep you really busy. OK, boys, you ready? Bob Knight has given us this opportunity, and it's great. It'll definitely be tough to keep motivated you know, academically. When you're in class, that's all you can worry about is class. There's nothing you can do out of the court. When you're in court, there's nothing you can worry about to do with the class. I'm trying to become a great student as well as an athlete. Shot! You really have to, you know, juggle your time to make sure you have time to get your schoolwork done, which is very important to me. I really want to have a good GPA when I get out of college so that I can go work somewhere, because I know I'm not going to be in the NBA. Well, probably not. <laughs> Coach thinks the basketball is not just a game. It's a subject. It's a class. It's one of the most important things that these kids will do and take while they're at Tech. <laughs> If you could keep your head when all about you are losing the hair. The first assignment that he gave us was a poem called If. Trust yourself while all in doubt. I think the poem was very inspirational. It saw leadership, dependability, um, learning patience. If you could dream and now make dreams your master. All things you need in the basketball um, aspect. You need to be dependable through team. You need to learn leadership, how to talk and communicate with your um, fellow teammates and everything. Just becoming a man, becoming to know how to play, be a player, a ball player. OK, boys, how are we doing this morning? Great. You guys all bright and ready to go? Or, or are you dumb and not ready to go? Which have we got here this morning? We damn sure better have bright and ready to go. The reason I gave you the poem wasn't just the poem in itself. How many of you think you are really good readers, that you read a lot? Reading gives you something that you can do all your life that you can get something from, just like this poem. If you can make one heap of all your winnings and risk it all on one turn of pitch and toss. The reason he's still coaching to me is that he's a teacher and that he loves to win. 
win meaning not just winning on the scoreboard, but winning like the preparation that it takes to pick this walk on, the preparation that it takes to coach our team at Texas Tech, just the, the preparation um, and what goes on trying to win and then teaching the game. Today, the thing that I want us to concentrate on more than anything else is the word that I just used, concentration. You have to develop mental characteristics that are better than other guys have. And absolute primary among those is concentration. AJ is the first shooter. Get set up, AJ. Next shooter. Everybody must concentrate on the ball. That's the most important thing in the game. Dustin, the next shooter. Oh, we win! A guy that can't put the ball in the basket is going to have problems. Arvin, our last shooter. Three seconds left. Oh! It's slip, but no excuses, right? I'm gonna hit it next time. We're going to start from midcourt with the basketball, five on five. Let's have one guy out from each team, white ball right here, going that way, and one conversion. Hey, let's go, what the hell are we doing? Hey, hold it, hold it, hold it. Let's get back in that line. Hey, get back in that line. Now, damn it, boys, this isn't a this isn't a brownies camp somewhere. You know, I've said just exactly what I want. One guy out from each team, white ball, black defense. I'm going to count to 10, and if we aren't done and the ball in play by the time I count to 10, we'll just run sprints. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. Have your mind on what you're doing. The dumbest thing in sport is don't think you hurt the team. When you're not thinking, that's when you're hurting the team. You have got to think to be a part of team play. Right here. We, on the, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. What should you have told him? That's exactly right. Why didn't you? Where should you have been? You should have been on the other side of midcourt. Well, you guys are showing me that you don't know what the hell concentration is. I thought we were playing full court, and Cody was it past the halfway mark. And the thing was like, in my mind, I should have told him, because he was telling me to, like, I have to step up and be a leader. I should have told him to back up and been half, half court. Out of concentration comes anticipation. Anticipation leads to recognition. Recognition then leads right in to the ability to execute. And execution leads to completion. And when you can do those things, you're going to win a basketball game. The ball was thrown to him. What's he going to do with it here? I got one thing I can do with it right here. You know what it is? Today's the day. You can't worry about tomorrow or yesterday because, you know, you've only got today to be your best. And if you're not your best, you might not be here tomorrow. I'm just going out there and giving it all I've got, and hopefully it's, it's what Coach Knight's looking for. Way to hustle, Diego. Let me talk to you just a moment about strengths and weaknesses. Everybody has weaknesses. That's what I look at first as a coach. All right, when I see your weakness, I say to myself, can we improve upon this weakness? Can we make it better? Can we, in fact, make it a strength? Maybe we can. A lot of times people think of basketball as just purely the physical skills, the shooting, the running, the rebounding. But what specifically one of the biggest things um, was the mental side of it. Which of these kids could pick up quickly and correctly what we were trying to do. AJ, shooting from outside is not a strength of yours. I've seen that in all of our workouts. Get the hell away from it. Play to your strengths. If he don't think I can take a shot, I'm not an asset to the team. What good is a ball player who can't shoot or can't score when he wide open? Three. Get off the baseline. Get off the baseline. Lock out. It's out. You came out here. Your foot wasn't set. And you just threw up a shot. You cut harder than most of these guys in here. Start getting a screen, cutting, and get stuff going to the basket. We'll try to improve weaknesses, 
but you know we we can't make uh i'd like to say chicken salad out of chicken sh but i don't think we want to do that for television boys coach doesn't waste words um when coach speaks it's for a reason so we just stay away from weaknesses and we play to our strengths let's go so get ready to help Good, go, oh, AJ, the dribble cost you. The dribble cost you. No, you're free, you did a good job. Who made that pass? Good pass, Arvin, really good pass inside. Arvin, the reason I didn't know who made that pass was I wouldn't have thought of you because you dribble it so much, I wasn't sure that you would have made the pass. Arvin's energy when he comes out here, his toughness to be able to play, it's, it's definitely something at this level you're gonna have to have in order to make a team. Okay, hold it, hold it, that's good. Stay where you are. I want all of you to grow four inches. Right now, grow four inches. Okay, you can't do it, you all agree with that? Yes, all right, now I want everybody to yell. Hey! hey! I yell louder than all of you, hey! hey! All right, so what we have is a voice. We can't get bigger, but we can use our voice. Who's got 30, who's got 30? I got it. We don't have to grow, we don't have to get quicker, we don't have to get stronger to be a really good communicator out here on the floor. Use your voice, bring it in, let's go. Communication is a big key, so I think Coach is right when he rides, all of us, but not talking. Talk, talk, talk! Get it out, get it out! Way to go, Tyler, good move, Tyler. Good move, Tyler, good move. That's it, Arvin. All right, now hold it, hold it. We just made a pass to James. Coming off on the baseline. The ball was thrown to him. What's he gonna do with it here? Nothing. Don't put the ball on the baseline with a pass or a dribble unless you have a shot or a drive to the basket. What the hell am I gonna do with it? Give me the ball. I got one thing I can do with it right here. You know what it is? Right there. That's the only thing I can do with it. He being Bob Knight. He say what he wanna say, how he feels, what he thinks about you, no matter who watching or who's there, it's, him. it's Bob Knight. All right, let's go. Half court, Diego, into him, Diego, hands. Don't stop him, Diego. Oh, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. All right, w where are my two officials? You guys might as well take those two whistles and make a rectal deposit with them. I'm really trying to work on my language. And if that's a little bit foreign to you, take those whistles and stick them up your ass. Because we got guys out here grabbing, shoving, holding, pushing. Let them know when they're committing a foul. Coach never gives up on a player. He's always trying to get them better. Every kid will get an equal chance of coach getting on them, praising them, teaching them, and an equal chance to make this team. How we doing, boys? We ready to go? Yes, sir. We ready to work? Yes, sir. Now, if I were to pick a team of all the players that I've coached, Mike would be the very first player I would take. Mike Govey is a personification of mental toughness. He's a 6'5 center that gave no quarter uh, to guys that were 6'10 or 6'11 when he played for us. I don't think that during the, the entire time I was at West Point, uh, Indiana, or here at Texas Tech, that if I had to pick a guy to defend the post for my team, there's anybody I would even consider other than Mike Govey because of how competitive he was how tough-minded he was, and how he had a singular drive to do the absolute best job he could on every single possession. Mike, it's all yours. Thank you, Coach. Hi. If they listen to Mike, the very first thing you ought to understand is enthusiasm and energy. Regardless of whether or not I had the best shot, that I could play for Coach Knight because I felt that Coach Knight would see in me that w which was necessary to be a, a player on his team. If you can't watch him and say, man, would I want this guy on my side, then uh, you have no concept of what it takes to be successful. My attitude was I knew I wasn't going to be able to compete on, on my uh, natural abilities, but I knew that I could compete with anybody in the country if I was stronger than they were and if I had the frame of mind that, that, uh, that I could beat them. And you guys are in a position where you're going to have to understand you're competing against each other, but you're competing to be a part of a team. In Coach Knight basketball, it's not the individual that counts. It's the effort of the team. 
regardless of what your ability may be compared to somebody else's ability, if you can find within you that much to make the difference and you can show that to Coach Knight, you will be playing for Coach Knight. If you want something bad enough, the obstacles, you don't even notice the obstacles. You look past the obstacles and you look to the goal that you're setting for yourself. And if you can do that, you can play for Coach Knight. Good luck. What we thought would be really good for our guys right now is to have a really intensive training session over in the football complex. And there, they're going to really work in a way that probably none of them ever have worked before. Three groups of four right here on this line facing that direction. What I'm doing is I'm testing to see if you can run fast, changing directions. First principle I want you to learn. What I'm trying to make them understand is that, you know, there's a certain level of performance that is expected of you if you want to be a Big 12 basketball player. Number one, 100% effort times 100% performance equals full potential. Go. Be ready. We had two guys break eight seconds. You're going to have to be smart. You're going to have to be able to perform at a certain uh, athletic level. There's a lot of people here that, do, that you do not know how to run changing directions fast. What is basketball? It's changing directions. Everybody thinks I'm fast because I'm a point guard, but I'm pretty slow footed. You can try your butt off and never do the performance. Is that going to equal full potential? You have to have to have them both. I think I can outrun, or I'm in better shape than the rest of the guys here, just because I've spent more time in the gym. OK, I'm 280 pounds, and about 80 of it is not muscle. And I can get through this. I want speed, I want your head straight ahead, and I want some good weaving. Ready, go. Quit looking where you're going. Go. Head straight up. Go! That's pathetic. Go! Pathetic. 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 Go! All right, guys. You don't have to look backwards to run backwards. Do you understand that? There's a lot at stake. I mean, if you don't perform in each day that we're here, then you might not be here the next day. Understand your timeline, whatever it is. There's only a certain amount of time you got to make the most out of your time. We're going to do six jumps. You're going to jump out as far as you can, jump again, jump. It's going to be continuous. I don't want you stopping. Now, the standard here is that cone, that's 60 feet. Now, that's the standard I give Coach Knott's players that, that, that they need to go at least 60 feet on six jumps. Go. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six was right here. That's pathetic. That's 13 feet off what I said was acceptable. Go. One, two, three, four, five, six. You know what happens if nobody gets past that cone? That means everybody sucks. Go. One, two, three, four, five, six. Go. Six hop drill, I, uh, well, I really wanted to do it because, first of all, he challenged us to do it. He said, we suck if we don't do it. Second of all, because I kind of messed up um, in the earlier quickness drill, so I was kind of mad. I kind of want to prove myself. A chain is only as strong as the weakest link. How strong is your team? Probably about as strong as the guy throwing the ball away all the time. I don't like that. Okay. Now, grip it. Both hands, no. Grip it right there. Like that. We're going to test your grip strength. Pick it up, walk with it. Walk as far as you can. Grip it, grip it, grip it. All right, change off. It wasn't heavy. I just couldn't grip it, but I don't know. Guys, you need to go at least 100 feet with that. It's not bad. Change off. Good grip. Not bad, change off. How are you gonna hold on to a basket?
basketball if you got poor grip, guys. You know, for coach, he can ask me who's the best jumper, who's who's the fastest guy. All these numbers may help him make the decision that he's looking at making. Okay, we're going to do a suicide. The suicide is exactly what his name says, suicide. I needed to get these guys tired, so that's why I pulled that one out of my bag of tricks. Touch the line. Guys, we're not done. I just thought we were going to go to the 25-yard line. Then he kept going back and back. One right here. Guys, I see some half fasting. It doesn't look like they've run that far, but it was really about 400 yards. It was one of the longest suicides I think I've ever ran, because usually you do it in the gym when you have like five lines, and we had like 10 or 15 lines to run on. Catch your breath. We're going to take a test. I knew I caught him by surprise, and that's really what I wanted to do. I want you to write down what I had on the board as accurately as you can write it down. It takes you a while to you know, just kind of sit down and collect your thoughts when your heart's going a 1,000 miles a minute. And, I mean, you have to seriously you know, buckle down and focus on what, what he's asking you to do. You got four minutes. It's kind of hard to think when you're, like, you know, trying to freaking just catch your tongue, like get your tongue out of the back of your throat because you're so tired. When you get tired in the game, you're going to have to be able to communicate, comprehend, explain. Okay, guys, you got about two minutes. I was done. I was tired. When we had to take that test, I was so tired. I had to think, because coach is always talking about concentration, and that, that was the key part right there, and to run that suicide and then concentrate on that test. Okay, guys, you're done with me. Let's break it up. One, two, three, three. I think I aced the test because I, I, I had it all down. I, there were a few a few parts that I wasn't exactly sure about. Missed one. But I, I think I, I got it right, so hopefully I uh, got a 100 on that exam. So. Okay, they missed one here. I just missed one, so but hopefully that won't be bad. I thought the guys did a, a pretty good job. All right, we got somebody that got a 100 here. It's good to get a taste of Division One athletics. Mm -hmm. I'm home. Home sweet home. I guess we had a rough day. Ah! Oh. Really, what you're seeing is not exactly everyone playing at their highest potential, I don't think, yet, but everyone's just trying to keep up and just trying to, like, go without passing out at some times because I think we're all just pretty tired and we're not in the best shape that we could be. Tomorrow we're off cutting four guys, and right now I think I'm kind of on the line, so I think tomorrow the way I play and uh, the way I come out with some determination and heart will depend whether I stay or not. I have to study. Y'all think I'm lying when I say I have to study. You gotta study right now. Like, your brain couldn't handle studying. Even though we'd be exhausted after practice and stuff, we know when we need to get our work done. I gotta keep my head on straight. I mean, there is basketball with Coach Knight, which I'm really looking forward to, and it's always on my mind, but I gotta make sure I take care of this stuff, too. I gotta keep both worlds, you know, just have a balance. I'm going to be thinking about sleeping, but uh, I'm going to hopefully finish out this stuff and then hit the sack because I'm sure we got another big day. He's got some stuff planned for us. I'm sure there's new surprises every day. Come on, pull up those shoulders. Pull up them. Get some drive in you. I'm not going to the arm. <laughs> Tell me about your physical conditioning session last night. It was, it was tough. Yeah. Well, we're talking about conditioning. We're not just talking about physical conditioning. We're talking about the ability to think, mental conditioning. Physical conditioning leads to good mental conditioning. But you in no way can have mental conditioning without physical conditioning. Because a tired body leads to a tired what? Mind. Tired mind. There's absolutely no question about it. I think I can safely say that no one you guys have encountered has done nearly the job with physical conditioning that Cliff has done. I wanted to take these guys through a mental workout. And the reason for that is because 
your mind controls your whole body. And if you think weak, you're going to be weak. If you think slow, you're going to react slow. If it was all about who, who's got the strongest bicep, everybody be doing curls 24 hours a day. When I come outside and I see guys in the in the military outfits and uniforms, I'm thinking um this this is going to be a competition that I'm going to like to compete in. What we're going to do today is we're going to see if you guys can uh, work as a team, work as a team under some stress. This is all part of uh, what Coach Knight is going to evaluate when he's picking a player. Working as a team is a big key in this. My name is uh, Cadet Dieter, here at Texas Tech. I'm in ROTC. We set up an orienteering course for you today. What are we doing? There's going to be various locations stationed all over the campus. At each location that you go to will be a series of events. No one knew that we were going to be doing some uh, ROTC training. These will be uh, set to standards that you have to complete. <laughs> That's funny. Good joke, guys. You're going to be timed. This is a timed event. Y'all got that? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Huh? Well, we're going to have four groups. Next thing you know. Group one. Group one, number three, 12, 20. Is it, it's a team thing? I just got to get that. Yeah. So, uh. Y'all stay together at the event until everyone's finished. At first I was upset because, I mean, I don't want to say he's one of the smaller guys, but he is a guard. He's a smaller guard. I don't care if your muscles are, are bigger than my entire body and, you know, you lift weights every day, I'm still going to give you all I got. Ready? Begin! Begin! First phase is going to be right behind me. You will start as a bear crawl from the first set of orange cones to the second set of orange cones, at which point you'll turn around and you'll crab crawl back. Come on, keep those front hands down. Look where they're going. Push it out. Block it out. Oh, man. A little harder than I thought. All my team was Cody, Darren, and myself. And uh, we just made sure we kept encouraging each other. Come on, guy. Get up. Dingo, get off. I definitely don't ever want to be the weakest link, so if we have a weak link, I'd like to encourage him and try to get him as strong as the rest of us. Go, Bob, Come on, Bob, Diego. Bob. Get up. Let's go. I think it's a little bit tougher for him sometimes to realize uh, it's a team game. It's not just about Arvin. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Keep your, stomach, keep your stomach on the ground. Come on. Pull with those shoulders. Pull with them. Come on, guys. Come on. Let's go. You're almost there. You're almost there. Get some drive in ya. Let's go, here. Come on! Keep it going. I wanted to quit, but my mom wasn't gonna let me quit. So, gentlemen, I'm pretty tired right now, but um, we got teammates pushing me in, we're pushing them, and we'll get through it. You have one minute to complete. I'm a little tired. It's a lot of hard work, more than I expected to do today. 211, 212, 213, and 215. Congratulations. 220. You two are no go at this station. My arms were not really working anymore. My thighs, you know, kind of break down really. Uh, and yeah, definitely my lungs are. So pretty much I'm dying, pretty much. <laughs> you got to be determined not to be tired. You know, that's what it's going to take uh, to make this team. That's what it's going to take to move on to the next stage. This is the rucksack run. We got an 80-pound rucksack. This thing is not going to be easy to take up. They will be smoked when they get up there. And they will be smoked when they get back down. You must run up and down 12 flights of stairs while wearing these 80-pound rucksacks. That stairwell was extremely hard, and that pack was extremely heavy. Come on, boys. Hey, just pace yourself. We got Lean forward. That's all you got to do. Three. I'm 5'8 and weigh 142 pounds. A backpack on your back that weighs more than half your weight. It's a little bit challenging. Once you get tired, you pretty much have to just push that out of your mind and just like, all right, I'm just going to go as hard as I can. Keep 
it was extremely heavy on my back. I mean, I mean, it got to the point where I mean, my back was starting to give out on me. You know, when it gets to that, you know, you just you're you're risking your body there, and I mean, I, I just <laughs> I wasn't gonna deal with it. Carrying those weights up those stairs on the backpack, that was rough. This is a lot more physical demanding on your body than I'm used to. You have to just keep pushing yourself even when you feel like you can't go anymore. No matter how hard something gets, you know, you never give up. God bless the USA, right? If they can do this stuff. Good God. Let's do this one for Mexico. Holy sh**. Come on, James. Keep moving your legs. You're doing awesome. Here we go. Last one, baby. Come on, let's go. Yeah, let's get it. You always, always finish. And I did. I finished. All right, you all received goes for the station. At this time, drink water and then move out to your next event. The reason for going through this, I'm sure, is just about teamwork because there's some guys in this team that might be the, the best athletes and best of basketball, but if you can't work with the team and, you know, make everyone better, then you're pretty worthless. Keep pushing, James. Keep pushing. So when you have teammates encouraging you and you're all pushing each other, um, I expect everybody to get through it as long as myself. Quitting is not an option at this point. After doing all that, you cannot quit. If one of us behind, you know, we'll kind of, you know, we won't separate each other. We'll kind of stay together, you know, to push the other guy along. Down off with your numbers. Through today, I learned how to become more of a team player. Guys, come on, I'm not going to wait long on you. Like, be, making sure that we had to go together and stuff like that. That's the on Diego? Yeah. Really showed me how to be a team player. Good job, guys. I had James and Cody on my team. And uh, we did all pretty good. James was, James was a little behind and everything, that, but uh, he didn't quit. He kept going, and so I'm proud of him. Come on, go, let's go. Let's go, man, you're almost done. Let's go, finish strong, let's Come go. On. This is it, all the way to the middle. Hopefully, we all push each other, you know, equally, and we all showed some leadership ability. Every number, buddy. Good job. Good job, man. Hopefully, it doesn't matter how quick we got done, because I wasn't the first one done, that's for sure. I'm still out of shape. But if it does, I tried my best. I did what I could. So. I think finishing was victory for every one of them. One, two, three. Hey! <laughs> This is like the last five minutes of the game. You've gone through something that's been very demanding. You've been stretched to the limits, really, in, in terms of, of exercise conditioning. And now you're a little bit fatigued. Your legs are tired. Your bodies are tired. But we got to win a game. And we got to win it in these five minutes. I think he's really testing us to see who's focusing. When somebody's down and tired, who's going to do what they're supposed to do uh, when they don't want to do it and when they can't think and they don't want to push themselves to the next limit? You guys are letting being tired dictate how you play. You guys are drifting too much. Hey, you guys got to make a rectal deposit with tired. Let's go. Let's go. You got to play. You got to suck it up. Get back into him. Get into him. Cody against Cody. What do you got, James? Passing lane, Cody. Good pass. Oh, make that. We got to make that bucket. Back out on top again. James, going through a lot of histrionics when you miss a shot doesn't do anybody any good. Sometimes when you're tired, it's hard to do the stuff you're supposed to do, but that kind of shows who's the better player and who's not. Come on, let's go. Let's go. It's your time. You've got five minutes to show us. Screen. Where's the screen over here, Diego? You're just running around. Get into him, get into him, Cody. All right, that's a foul. You got to move your feet. Come on, get up. Get up, Arvin. Let's go. Don't have time to sit on your ass. Get up. How's that conditioning? Show who got hard. See who want to play. You guys want to walk? That's fine. 
No, no, give, give it to White. Darion, you cost your team the ball. I was just so cramped up from uh, the stuff that we did before, and it kind of carried over when we started playing basketball, and that really hurt me. Good pass. Everybody's just going as hard as they can, man. We're just trying to prove ourselves. You know, get your hands off your heads. I'm not tired. I'm three times as old as you guys are, and I am not a bit tired. If you're too tired to play, then we got a really good thing for you. Chairs. You can be a spectator, not a player. Let's go. It's kind of hard to focus sometimes after doing all that stuff we did earlier and then keep running and stuff, but mainly you just, you got to be tough. You guys have got to work at what we've worked at so far. You're just letting it go. Spacing, good screening, set up the cut. We don't see it. That's what we're looking for. Bring it in. Let's go. Okay, everybody right here. Right here. Let's go. Let's go. Okay, boys. Now, we're down to the point where Stu and Pat and Chris and I are going to get together and evaluate the play of U12. You're not thinking well as a group. You know, I'm sure this is the most that you've ever been exposed to in your lives in terms of difficulty, both physically and mentally. Eight will stay, four will go, and we'll get you together when we're done evaluating. Okay, boys. Set, go three, let's go. One, two, three, set. When we get upstairs, it's going to be four different versions of uh, what we coaches see, because I don't think any coach sees the same thing. Let's let Cliff give us a quick rundown on the kids that he thought went through the physical to the mental part uh, better than anybody else. Go ahead, Cliff. Well, I thought they all put forth a lot of effort, but I would um, have to say the guys that stood out the best was uh, Dustin, Arvin, and Cole. Were the rest of them pretty well grouped, or were there a couple pretty guys? Pretty much. That, there wasn't anybody then that just slacked, or anybody that, that you just had to stay after completely? The three guys that I thought broke down the most, I would say, was James, Diego, and Darion. All right. We've got 12. We've got to get to eight. Some people view coaches as dictator that makes every decision without asking people's opinion, and that is far from the truth. Pat, let's start with you. Who would you cut? Number 11, James. When the coaches went up to do their deliberations, you're just sitting in the locker room, and for a while I'd just sit there and be like, all right, I did this correct, I did this correct, I kind of messed up doing this. Number 43, Darion. Number 33, Cole. There's people sitting by themselves, you know, thinking, kind of recapping. You know, there's other guys talking about who they might think they get cut. My fourth cut is uh, number 20, Diego. I would cut either the two Cody's, Darion, James, or Josh would be the other person that I would cut. Did we all cut James number 11? Yeah. I didn't cut him. Stu did not. Stu didn't, okay. Stu, would you argue for cutting somebody in James' place? I would argue for cutting Cody, Cody number five in, in James', James place. place. We have three definite cuts, Cole number 33 or Josh number 23 as our fourth cut. So going once, going twice, going three times. Okay, our four cuts are... The auctioneer has asked, the bidders have spoken, and that's it. If I'm supposed to get cut, then I'm going to get cut. I mean, I respect Coach Knight's decision because he knows what he's looking for. I know everybody that's here still wants to be on the team pretty bad. I'm really worried about going to the elimination, so hopefully it'll end up okay. If I get cut, then I get cut, and I look at it as a, it's been a great experience. Not many people get this. 
I've tried to push myself as hard as I can today. Leave it all out there, like Coach says. Fatigue makes cowards of us all. I think that, that to ever be successful, you've got to understand that there is disappointment. Kids have a very, very difficult time with that. Okay, boys, we're at this point again. Let me simply tell you that you guys have been put through about as rigorous a campaign, both on the court and off the court, as I've ever seen kids go through. The whole idea was fatigue, concentration. You're tired, can you concentrate? Can you play through fatigue? We're not satisfied with the slippage that we have in play from what we talk about. Nobody, nobody stands out in this whole category of doing what has to be done by recognizing the situation and reacting to it. In our next countdown, that's going to be the most important thing for the eight players that we retain. And the four players that we will not retain are James. Dario Diego and Josh the eight we are retaining have got a lot of work to show us somebody that gets beyond everybody else okay fellas thanks congratulations hi 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 now On three, James, count it up for us. One, two, three, tag! It, it sucks, you know, obviously, there's some little talented guys out there and stuff. Put a lot of effort in all this, and um, oh, I guess just right now it's just a feeling you know, of getting rejected. I mean, that's always a pretty harsh feeling. You know, I mean, 150 people came out for this show, and so, you know, not all of us can have our dreams. So, you know what I mean? Somebody's got to win, somebody's got to lose. It's all right. That, that fatigue definitely came into play. Man. All right. <laughs> I think I've grown a lot. I think, you know, getting to hang out with Coach Knight and go through all this, I mean, we were really tested to the limit. Let's go. You got to play. You got to suck it up. You know, I want a guy out here that can play, that when I tell him once what to do, he does it. Some of the workouts we went through were extremely intense. And those were some of the hardest things I've ever done in life. I honestly don't think I played up to my potential at all, but I, it was, it was, I mean, he was so right when he said a tired body equals a tired mind because it really affected how I play because when I'm tired, like, I just, I'm not the same player at all. Well, there goes, uh, Josh Auerhorn. <laughs> I didn't play good today, but that's the way it goes. I should have been able to come out there and do what I needed to do. You got it, James? Later, James. Later. Of course, disappointment, you know, comes when you get cut from anything. But um, I mean, uh, I mean, it's 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 life, so it's all right. In my mind, I do feel Coach made a mistake. I think you know, I think at all the players out there, I put a lot of great effort into what I did, and. Uh, uh, I guess maybe he, just, like I said earlier, did saw something that he didn't like. Hey 
Pontiac invites you to see what's next on Night School. Coming up on the next Night School. Each group of four will be involved in either three or four minutes of four on four playing against our scholarship players. Ready? All right, let's go, let's go, let's go. Black ball, black ball. They had to learn how rough this is, how tough this is. Get up on the high post and set a screen. Get rid of it. This isn't like playing in the Emerald League, AJ. Wouldn't be surprised if I was kept by next round. You try to do as much as you can in practice to make every skill more difficult for players than they're going to have it in game. Get it, get it. Next two, get out of there. Next, next. Go get it, get it. Get out of there. Next two, get it, get out of there. It seems to me it's getting more and more intense. We've had a great effort with U8. Now we'll see who stays for the next round. One, two, three, four. Brought to you by Pontiac, official performance machines of the NCAA.